Alrighty guys, we're back for some Invoke Cabaretti, and this is a Streets of New Cavena standard build. We're going to go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. But first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and any decks with red in them as well. So I hope that sounds fun to you guys. Okay, so what do we have in the build here? Well, this build is actually loosely based off of those lore hold decks that were popular for a hot second but without the lore hold instead we're still rocking the invoke justice which is a five mana sorcery with four white mana required <laughs> to cast it so we had to make the entire deck majority white for sure so return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield then distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures and or vehicles target player controls you obviously target yourself with this ability to plug counters onto yourself. <laughs> Either way, the entire deck's built around this concept where we want to be able to hit powerful permanents out of the grave with this. So what else do we got in the build? Well, I am rocking a single paladin class. The level two is pretty good, but there aren't too many creatures in the deck to actually buff. We're really looking at the first level and the third level here. So First level is, spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more to cast. Now this can slow down a bunch of decks. Again, I really wanted just more permanence in this build though too, so that's another reason why I landed on the Paladin class. If you don't want this card in here, you could just go up another Portable Hole, or even another Blade Historian, or another Vorinclex, which we'll go over all those cards in just a second. But the level 3 here, for the five mana which is it's very expensive to get this card to level three but whenever you attack until end of turn target attacking creature gets plus one plus one for each other attacking creature that's all fine but what we really want on this is um it gains double strike as well and so this is going to pair beautifully with some of our trample uh, creatures in the build so i don't know how often it's going to come into play but we'll see we have three portable holes because there are plenty of Naya runes and Boros aggro and even mono white still floating about on the ladder. So portable holes going to be very important. We have four ambitious farm hands. Okay, so this is a two mana human peasant. It's a one one. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. So this is just making sure that you have plenty of land to play does have a coven ability here which the coven isn't going to be too bad to pull off so for the three mana you can transform ambitious farmhand activate only if you control three or more creatures with different powers like i said that's not too bad to pull off here uh, because of some of our other creatures but yeah it, it could be tough to actually flip this and when it does flip it's a three three with a lifelink which actually just is pretty good and it blocks pretty well and you know the life gain is going to be very important so we have four Rafines informants so two drop two one when it enters the battlefield it connives okay <laughs> so our two drops are are very weird but the deck is trying to do like this very specific thing so i wanted a two mana card that was also white that let us discard but it also had to be a permanent and i think rafine's informant is that card that we want here and something really cool if you do have the farm hand if you have an informant that connived for a three two and another informant well then you already have three different um powers for the coven on the farm hand i don't know how often that's going to come up but yeah just with these two creatures it's easy to get the coven ability off so we have a couple Arkin of Amiria. Uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. I have no idea. Three drop, two, three with flying. Each player can't cast more than one spell each turn. That's 100% okay for us, especially if we're taking time to power up Paladin class. But most of the time, our cards are just very expensive, so we can only play one of them anyways. <laughs> and also, if we do have a ton of mana and we play a card, then maybe we can also pay the Coven cost on the Ambitious Farmhand too. So we don't get too punished for this card, but other players will. The Boros decks will. The especially Naya runes, which love to pop off by playing multiple runes each turn. This can really slow them down. And so I wanted more cards that could slow down the opponent, but they also had to be permanents because of the invoke uh, justice. So 
Also, non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. Yeah, this this could just slow down the opponent regardless. So we have four Restoration of a Ganjo. The first ability helps us ramp or, or get planes into our hand, the same as the farm hand. But then the second ability, you may discard a card. So we want that discard ability, right? But then you can return target permanent card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And we have a lot of great ones. You could even discard a portable hole and bring it back. So that's pretty cool. And then it does turn into the Architect of Restoration, which then could also get us a bunch of 1-1 colorless spirit creature tokens, which is kind of where the level 2 on that one Paladin class could come in handy by buffing all those extra tokens. It's actually a ton of creatures packed into this deck, um, just off of the Sagas too. We have four Fable of the Mirror Breakers, because it's an amazing card, but the second ability helps us discard. We can discard some of our more valuable creatures while looking for our Invoke Justice, which that's going to be pretty important. Reflection of Kikijiki has a lot of cool targets in here too. Well, not a lot necessarily, but it has a really cool target in the four drop spot. Fleet Foot Dancer, heck yeah, four mana. It's got the Naya colors or the Cabaretti colors, whatever you want to call it. Trample, lifelink, haste, 4-4. Four, four. Woo, buddy, this is what you want to hit with the Invoke Justice. This is what you're slamming into your graveyard. As long as it's safe to put it into your graveyard, <laughs> um, then this is what you're slamming into it to bring back with the Invoke Justice. And hopefully you're bringing it back while you have some double strike on the board off of the Blade Historian. Attacking creatures have double strike same concept as the level 3 paladin class with fleetfoot dancer if it is trample lifelink haste and double strike then it's not looking great for the opponent but with the invoke justice if you're slamming all the counters into the dancer anyways that's probably just game at that point so that's pretty cool we do have three doom scars this is kind of an emergency card where there are going to be plenty of moments where it's okay to kill your own creatures because your opponent has just run away with the board. And sometimes, because you are playing your own creatures, the opponents feel safe from board wipes. And so they kind of just dump their hand onto the board and then you doom scar, and it doesn't hurt you as much as it hurts them because you can always bring stuff back with the Invoke Justice or even with the second ability on the Restoration of a Ganjo. And then on the very top end, we are rocking a Vorinclex. Naturally, this is a great card to hit off of the Invoke Justice 2, and that could really end a game if you're plugging all of your counters into the Vorinclex. And let's say you had that Blade Historian on the board. <laughs> well, that is a 10-10 Trample Haste with the Double Strike once it attacks in, so that's really neat. Okay, the mana base is completely leaning towards white. We do have... All the Sundown Passes, the Overgrown Farmlands, two Jetmere's Garden, and uh, six Pathways total. You could rearrange the mana base pretty much however you want. I tried to make it so that way it doesn't slow us down too much. We don't need green early on at all, so I just decided that the extra Pathways that had green weren't as important as just making sure that it also had white on it too. And then the eight planes is pretty important since the farmhand and the restoration both grab basic planes from the deck. And there's eight of those and only eight planes, and you're going to be drawing these naturally too. So hopefully the eight planes is actually enough for the deck as it is now. All right, guys, let's go take this into ranked and see if it can do a thing. I just clicked normal play mode. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I blame the game because it put me on alchemy play mode again and I tried, so I just kind of moved it up to the regular. Well, I guess we get a test game in normal play mode, but then we'll hop into ranked. I apologize, guys. This is not the first time I've done this, unfortunately. Hey, at least it's better than that time that I played against Sparky for the first game. Right? Maybe? Maybe it's not better. 
<laughs> Maybe it's about the same. Okay, grab a planes. And we don't have that green for the Fleetfoot Dancer just yet. Uh, if they swing, we, uh, we, we trade. <laughs> That's fine. 100% a-okay. We'll probably safely get this down on red. And foretell this. That is all okay. So this looks like a, some kind of elf build. Jenny Faye! Also, guys, I apologize that it took me a bit longer to go over this deck. There's a lot packed into it. I think it took me around nine minutes, which is a lot longer than I usually prefer. But a lot of you guys commented on the last video that you love the chapters, and so that's good. Hey, we got that green source. I'm going to go Fleetfoot Dancer because two turns of Fleetfoot Dancer could be enough. <laughs> I, I realize that the Doomscar is pretty good, but that's more of an emergency. And if we end up having to kill our Fleetfoot Dancers, then the Invoke can bring it back anyways. And we got plenty of Invokes in the deck. See, like, they're feeling pretty safe. <laughs> they're, pre they're feeling pretty safe, so we're just going to hold on to that Doomscar. It's not like our life is in danger when these Fleetfoots are gaining us so much. And they even probably swing in here, too. So, the other fleet foot could hit the board. Blizzard Brawl. Okay, now the Doomscar comes out. <laughs> you, uh... You have guaranteed the Doomscar, opponent. You have guaranteed it. Uh, Restoration. Yeah. Doomscar. Hey, no Tamiya safekeeping. <laughs> That's good. Tamiya safekeeping could have saved one of the uh, greeters or the Ginny Fay sculptor. Guys, yeah, this this is a cool deck. This looks a lot like the uh, it was my first mono green build. We can safely play this on white. As funny as that is, we don't need the double red. Well, we can also safely play it on red. And we could also just play this, too. <laughs> There's like... Yeah, we might as well go Fleetfoot Dancer. We might as well. Funny enough, we're not even meant to directly cast the Vorinclex, but we really want to see the second green. Huh. That is sticking, so I wonder what that is. We might as well play this down on red since both of the restorations grab us a basic planes. It's not like we're going to need more white sources anytime soon. Realm Walker, nice. Yeah, at the at the very beginning of New Capenna, I made an elf build. It was uh it was mono green elves with like Jenny Fay, and it looks very similar to this. I didn't rock the Realm Walker, I don't think. That's a that's a great addition. Okay, invoke justice. <laughs> invoke justice. That'll That'll do a thing, and it's gonna do a thing right now. We're one mana short from going Restoration, play a Plains, and still be able to invoke Justice, so... Yeah, we're just doing this. Target player, you gotta target yourself. Do we split it? We split it, probably, right? I think that's fine. A couple Fleetfoot Dancers never hurt nothing, let me tell ya. Woo! Body. Pretty much anything we rip off the top of our deck is going to be good. Except for more land. Don't really need that. Restoration will let us discard the Vorinclex and bring back the Ambitious Farmhand. Since we're having trouble actually playing Vorinclex. Wizard Brawl. Doesn't, doesn't do it. Thank you for the life gain. <laughs> uh, GG, I think that was their way of conceding, uh, potentially. Yeah, GG. GG, <laughs> opponent, that is rough. So, a Blizzard Brawl, maybe they were showing like, oh, the Death Touch would have actually been able to take it out or something, right? That does make sense. Uh, maybe they were just playing it to play it too. They probably have quests and everything. 
I mean, I always bring up quests and, and letting the opponent actually play it out to get their quest done, so... I bet that's what it was. Mono Green Elves, it looks really fun, but this deck tricks people to dump their creatures onto the board, so that emergency doom scar <laughs> is just brutal. Hopefully we can turn one Jetmere's Garden. Hopefully we're not forced to just go right into Portable Hole. Oh, wait. We're going first, it looks like. Yeah, nice. That's good. Blade Historian. Let's see what we draw off the connive here. Okay. I think Portable Hole is going to be good, but we can bring it back with the Restoration. Is that an okay play? I don't know. It might just be better to keep the Portable Hole. Faithful Absence, okay. <laughs> Another Restoration. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, Restoration. I mean, these Sagas do their work, so... Once it flips to Architect, it's a very dangerous card. Discard a card. Yeah, we'll discard a Planes quite safely here. Bring back the Rafine's Informant over the ramp, because I don't know if we need the ramp right now. Get the Connive. Doomscar is probably not going to do a whole lot. Blade Historian most likely dies or gets countered. I think I'd rather... I think I'd rather get rid of one of the other restorations, though. Even though it might be a really good card uh, to have. The Doomscar doesn't hit next turn, but I feel like a Juari Disruption or something is going to happen. Let's try the other Restoration. If it is Juari, then we have the extra mana here. Okay, we can grab a Plains. Okay, they're going to go ahead and uh, pop the Jetmere's Garden. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So, Plains. We got plenty of Plains. Plenty. <laughs> this is one of those reasons why you might want to include a single forest and a single mountain. I think those are going to slow you down, though, for sure. Whenever you need, like, all the planes and stuff for a Blade Historian. Obviously, Blade Historian can use mountains, too. But, um, discard a card. Yeah, I guess we could bring... I guess we could ramp now. Well, yeah, but get the uh, Jetmere's Garden back is probably better, since there is a green on there. And we could go play this on red. And we will attempt to get Blade Historian down. Since they didn't foretell, that means Doomscar is not happening yet. Disdainful Stroke, okay. Okay. We don't mind that too much. We have plenty of Invoke Justice in the deck to bring that back, plug counters into our other really good creatures, and then swing in for some double strike, you know? <laughs> oh no, guys, I'm, I'm still not in ranked. <laughs> I forgot again. You guys are probably screaming at me. That's funny. We do this before combat because we could draw a elf here. Fable. Okay, we'll swing. That's really funny, though. I, I apologize, guys. Attempt the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, even though a Doom Scar could happen next turn. Or tell this and hope that they don't Doom Scar. Okay, right into the Doom Scar. That's okay. We're fine. We get to discard a pathway, and we're still looking pretty good. The opponent literally could not wait to drop the Doomscar. Okay, ditch both of those. Even though the green source might be okay to keep. There we go. 
great draw. Fable of the Mirror Breaker really coming in handy. Better get another one down, right? Now we get to watch the Reflection of Kiki Jiki soon. Maybe copy the Pink Foot Dancer. Nope, second Doom Scar coming through. Reflection that still turns. We really don't want to see this land. Oh boy. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I wish Reflection had haste so bad. Just being able to copy the Fleetfoot Dancer. That's okay, though. The opponent needs a lot of answers, and we still have, like, four Invoke Justice in our deck to hopefully get the job done, too. <laughs> That's awesome. And, guys, I promise I'll go into Ranked now. I can't believe the first two matches. They were good matches, though. These were solid matches. Against opponents playing decks that we might see in ranked anyways. Like, yeah. Oh, GG opponent. GG. <laughs> it's always good to beat control, for sure. Always good. Okay, so. Play... Ranked. There we go. I'm sorry, guys. These victories would have been great in ranked. Help me get back up to platinum real quick, you know? Well, now we're overdue for a loss, so hopefully we'll be fine. Okay, no third land is actually really bad. And we go first. I guess that's good, but we don't get to draw. This is actually, yeah, it's a mulligan hand, but I'm going to keep it, and here's why. The turn two, at least we have the Doom Scar, and at that point, we have enough land to just to just draw one. We even have the four farm hands. Okay, good. Good, good, good. We drew it. We're fine. As long as we get the third, we're A-OK. -okay. And there's a farmhand, too. Probably going to be Restoration. Get a Plains. The Archon here could have been pretty good, too. But I think that's going to be better once the opponent has more to play on their turns. Okay, because that I, th I was expecting a Fable of the Mirror Breaker there. Discard a card. Bring it on back. Grab another planes. Yep. Uh, play the planes. And now it's going to be between Fable of the Mirror Breaker and the Archon because, yeah, they could start playing two cards. I think it's going to be Fable of the Mirror Breaker here. This Doom Scar is for emergency cases only. So it's 100% okay to just play out your creatures. Voltage Surge, especially when the opponents have removal for him. <laughs> this has been a fun deck so far. I, I feel a little silly going into normal play mode after promising ranked, but we're in ranked now, so I hope everyone is okay with that. Just a, just a mistake one of those things maybe we'll we'll spend an entire day playing sparky one day i believe that could happen okay we could discard the farm hand and probably discard the, the planes too pretty safely and see what we draw opponent keeping everything open is super sketchy to me like i don't like that at all if we start with portable hole Must be more Voltage Surge and, and stuff, right? That's my assumption. So, taking the Harvester, if they do have Artifact Removal, then when the Harvester does re-enter, they do get another Blood Token, but I think overall that'll be fine. Yep, we're, we're gonna play this. Vorinclex can just be, uh... This straight up be cast next turn 
Okay, here comes the second voltage surge onto the architect, it looks like. Okay. So, not too bad. Like, everything that the opponents have been doing, just it just doesn't feel that bad uh, for this deck. Because we have so many answers and so many ways to bring stuff back and everything. We don't have any ways to, like... Yeah, we do, actually. Invoke Justice brings back enchantments, too. That's the whole point of the permanence. So, yeah, I mean, technically, Invoke Justice does a lot. Searching for some answers. They can't play their second spell this turn, but if it's a third Voltage Surge, that, that could be a problem. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is pretty good. We could safely play this on red. And we're going to go right into Boring Clex because... It, it's a game ender. We don't swing with farmhand because we can use the coven ability next turn. And a meat hook for three doesn't kill Vorinclex, which is gonna be a big issue. A meat hook for four even doesn't hit Vorinclex, so even if they play a land. I'm feeling pretty good, especially when we can top deck just so many goodies. While the opponent's thinking, I'm going to go ahead and get a drink of water. Ah, it's good soup. <laughs> hey, Fleetfoot Dancer. Wow. What a draw. What a draw. Oh, I forgot to mention this while going over the deck. Yeah, the Vorinclex counters are obviously doubled. I, I think I even messed up while going over the deck. Whenever you do play the Invoke... The Invoke um, Infernal Grasp on the Fleet Foot. Dang. Dang. Well, on it, it's looking sketchy. You got removal for the Vorinclex? No. Ah... Uh... <laughs> not looking great for the opponent but they could go yeah even a meat hook for four or a meat hook for three yeah gg opponent gg <laughs> well nice getting through gold that's good i wish the first two games <laughs> were were also in ranked but that's fine anyways yeah the invoke calamity yeah I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, like, I'm butchering everything today. Uh, the Invoke Justice counters go double onto the board whenever Vorinclex is out. So I think whenever I was going over the deck, I called it a 10-10 trample. Really, it would have been, if you plugged everything into the Vorinclex, a 14-14 trample haste. So... <laughs> That was just uh, that was just me messing up in those moments. I mean, obviously, that's the reason why Vorinclex is in here. Not only for the haste and for the trample, but doubling the Invoke Justice counters. All of that is very important. Or an important reason to, to have it in the build. What do you guys think about my two drops in the deck so far? They seem pretty good, don't they? Ambitious farmhand making sure we get all of our all of the mana required. Okay, so this could be really, really bad. I'm tempted. No, it's gonna be fable. It's gonna be fable, and here's why. They probably can't kill us next turn. <laughs> Um, and being able to discard, like, an extra land that we draw. Okay, they're gonna keep the... Right, so we're gonna discard, and... Do we wanna discard the other one? I don't think so. I think we wanna keep it. The informant isn't doing too much. I guess we could discard the informant as well. Do what we draw. Okay. Another Fable's not bad. The Emergency Doom Scar is probably going to come in handy. I think they take the two damage here. 
Getting an extra treasure is pretty good for us, too. We could even attempt the Doomscar this turn, which I don't think is what we want. Gonna be another Fable, and then we will prepare the Doomscar. Because I still don't think they can kill us. And using that treasure token is 100% okay to prepare a, a cheaper Doomscar. Yeah, if any deck is going to beat this one today, it's going to be this Magecraft, like the Selesnia Magecraft style. Guiding Voice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So got three mana open. They're going to rock the Containment Breach. A Containment Breach swing means Doomscar comes down next turn no matter what. They end up passing. They want to keep that protection open. So a Tamiyo Safekeeping is, could save their butts. Two Tamiyo Safekeepings would just mean like... Would just mean like we're dead. <laughs> uh, we could safely discard these and look for more. Portable hole is really good. Okay. So. We could start with the portable hole. And see if we, if they let us hit one of the light scribes. So it, it, it's, it has to be protection. Like, could you imagine them not having it? Okay, snakes can veil. So that's not a Tamiyo safekeeping. So they don't have indestructible. So I think I think man, this is a tough decision. Something I forgot to mention with the ambitious farmhand too, with the coven ability, distributing these four counters can help you get the coven ability easily as well. See, we really don't want to waste the Doom Scar. Like, we want to make sure this Doom Scar can get through. So, here's what we're going to do. They don't know what's in our hand. We might just cheese this damage through. But if it is a Tamiyo safekeeping, they can probably safely block here. Even so. So, they don't think it, we're going to have removal. Or it is a Tamiyo safekeeping. Very tough decisions, guys. Very tough decisions. We're gonna do the... Yeah, we're gonna drop the Doom Scar. Here we go. <laughs> so, something's sticking. Safekeeping could really save their butt. Okay, we ended up getting there. That's good. That is excellent. So, I wonder how many more creatures they have that we're gonna have to deal with. Yeah, they got the Lumamancer. Containment Breach on the Fable. Okay, Ambitious Farmhand. So I guess we... I guess we go Farmhand, and I guess we can Invoke Justice. Bring a uh, Fable. And then we can always discard the Planes next turn to the, to the Fable, too. What do you guys feel about that play? The informant could be good, too. We'd be able to spread more of these counters. But I think it's Fable. Auto pay. Do have three more invoke uh, justice in the build. And, like, yeah, we get to reestablish a board state, discard some cards next turn, and keep on searching. GG opponent! Let's go, guys! So far, four wins for the video. Two of them were in normal play mode, and two of them were in ranked. And honestly, we probably have time for one more, as long as it's not too long. <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a little lucky. I don't know. The last couple, like, I just got done recording my Golgari aggro, too. We'll see. Can we end on a high note? I'm pretty satisfied with these victories. Not too satisfied, uh... 
with myself today. <laughs> Not with like uh, misplays or anything. I just I I don't know. I feel like I'm I'm bumbling about. Just one of those days, you know. It happens. This is a fine hand, even though it's slow. Plenty of stuff to draw. The the whole deck, we just rip fire off the top. Look at that. We don't even get punished uh, for keeping all the tap lands. Portable hole's pretty good here. I think we could safely ditch the fleet foot now. Even though a turn four fleet foot's pretty good. Crap, it's really good, isn't it? Yeah, I, I guess ditching the portable hole's fine. We don't exactly know what we're up against, even though it hits eye twitch so well. Uh, if it is, like, just control, then okay, we're going to start with a swing. If it is just control, then the portable hole only hits the eye twitch, whereas the double invoke justice is so good. And then Fleetfoot Dancer, being able to play it, making them waste removal on it and then we just keep bringing it back is insane i think they were thinking about a a deadly dispute there okay so them playing these out as murk water tells us that they have their version of invoke invoke despair right so we are going to attempt the Fleetfoot Dancer, which most certainly eats some removal here. <laughs> some Ray of Enfeeblement! Oh man, that's that's a devastating removal spell for the Fleetfoot to die to. Gotta be 100%, that was a lot more devastating than like an Infernal Grasp. Yeah. <laughs> well... Raven Feeblement doesn't hit a nice chunky Fleetfoot Dancer, so let's do it. Boop. Target player. It's got to be more spot removal, so we're going to plug the counters like this. Because, like... Right, yeah, more spot removal. Like I said, now they can chump block the Rafine's Informant, which is 100% okay. Get this eye twitch out of my way. Like, get, get it out of here. And so we could start actually swinging in at the opponent's face. Nice, nice. Necrotic Fumes. So hopefully they waste that on the Informant so my Fleetfoot Dancer can get through. Oh, the Invoke Despair, though. Nah, that's rough. That is rough. That mirrors garden. Okay. Invoke Justice is actually pretty scary to play right now because of the fact that they probably have more Invoke Despairs. We had two of our Invokes. They might have theirs. Oh, you know what I should have done? Should have saved this for the cycling. We could have just played Pathway. We have enough land. I kind of made a mistake there. Yeah, we, we wanted the, the garden to cycle. For sure. So, something to consider, guys. I kind of played poorly there. The cycle could have been really good. And we, at this point, we might as well play the pathway, too. Even though if we get a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, eventually discarding this could be good. Darn, yeah. I don't know. Opponent slowed us down pretty good, guys. Very, very tough. The first Ray of Enfeeblement really did a number on us. A couple Zambies. They can't block, luckily. Invoke Justice! Holy cow! Oh my goodness. <laughs> so one more mana, we could have powered this up and dropped the Doomscar, but what we kind of want to do... One, two... They have Hive available. This is going to flip. I think we do this, and if they get too greedy on their turn, we can invoke Justice and have a double strike swinging in, unless they play Invoke Despair to kill our Paladin class. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. As long as we, they don't have any discard abilities to make us discard the Invoke Justice. Plus, I think it's 100% okay if we lose this one. Winning four in a row was 
completely fine. <laughs> like, the deck overperformed, so. Let me hook for zero. They swing. That most likely means there's more spot removal. Right? So we probably play it safe and go Doomscar and, and wait for the moment where they don't have spot removal for the Invoke Justice. Oh, another... Another planes, which we're not playing. We're gonna we're gonna deem scar this. Uh, we could go planes, invoke justice. We could try. We could go for the win. We could. Wait, 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 wait. Fleet Foot got exiled. Oh crap! The necrotic fumes exiled it. So we'd have to go Rafine's informant for the invoke justice, which does not have haste. <laughs> Oh no, guys. Oh no. Not having haste is particularly bad. We gotta wait. We, we we really have to wait. And I'm saving this planes in case we get a fable. Yeah, I forgot. This this being exiled is huge for the opponent. Tenacious underdog without the haste. So they can't they don't think they can win this turn. Is good news. Okay, the informant's pretty solid. Any creature, anything is good right now. Doomscar. Doomscar could be good again. I'm gonna say no and go for the counter on the informant. Because if we get rid of the planes, we don't get the counter. We could still go invoke justice this turn, which we might as well. At this point, guys, at this point, it's looking pretty good for the opponent. We might as well play this out. Yeah, we could wait. We could wait for more haste, but we could also just top deck haste and just straight up play it too. We don't got to cheat it out with invoke justice or anything. So, March gaining so much life here. Oh no. <laughs> Another invoke justice. I'm gonna discard the planes this time. We're not getting rid of justice here at all. We drew all four. <laughs> we just need some haste, guys. No, the mauling. <laughs> Opponent is playing removal the deck. And it is rough. It is very, very rough. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get out of this one. Not without some haste. A good draw. We go that over the justice for sure, especially if we can end up uh, discarding something next turn that had and looking for something with haste. The problem is they gain so much life. No. Oh, crap. Crap. Okay, it's gonna be Fable over the Paladin because Paladin class is. Oh no, guys, we're at one. No, we need we need a Fleet Foot off the top. Fleet Foot off the top can gain us life, and it'll have double strike from the Paladin class, so... No! Okay, Invoke Justice, and then we'll bring back the... So this... Wait, View Browser. Wait, Cancel. We can bring back... They have that, they have Hive... We can power up Hive. Yeah. Drop the good game before he knew we had a, a... Like, we could have drawn a Fleet Foot Dancer, which would have had double strike. But Fable, target player. And the reason we went Fable there is, it, it, is because it doesn't matter because of the Hive. Very good game opponent. Oh man, that was a rough one, guys. That was a very rough one. Opponent powering up Hive um, would have been good even in the middle of this match, trying to take stuff away from the Invoke Justice. But yeah, GG, 80% overall win rate. Three of those matches were in ranked, and the first two were unfortunately in normal play mode, but it is what it is. I kind of... <laughs> 
I don't know, guys. I It's just, like I said, one of those days, I guess. Either way, let's go ahead and go over the deck one more time. Uh, I have a lot to say here, but I'm going to try to say it briefly. A few things. We could probably drop a Blade Historian and go up a uh, Vorinclex because we do want to see more of these hasty creatures. And then Vorinclex, of course, works with all the counters in the deck from the Rafine's Informant uh, Connive uh, doubling its counter too, right? And then also the counters on the Invoke Justice as well. Some other things, you guys saw that we just couldn't get there against that final game against a lot of removal, but I don't think that's how it's usually going to be. I got to be real with you. I think opponent really ran away with that. I think generally speaking, we would be favored in matchups like that where we don't care too much if they're just pinging uh, one for ones left and right because we can eventually bring it back off the justice or even restoration of a ganjo being able to bring back an informant or a farmhand or anything like that i think early on in that game i think portable hole keeping that in hand would have been better i think i needed to stop that eye twitch early on so i think it started to go downhill for us at that point so kind of my fault i think portable hole on the eye twitch would have resulted in a very different game because they wouldn't have had the necrotic fume to exile the fleetfoot dancer that being said we don't really know what's in the opponent's hand at any given time and so they could have had more eye twitch so that is something to uh, think about we did get to see paladin class in that last game too and while it didn't do anything it could have right if we top decked fleetfoot dancer a double strike lifelink would have kept us in that game for an extra turn forcing the opponent to have more removal and so um i think the one of is a hundred percent okay especially for the longer games again if you don't like it go up a portable hole go up a doom scar go up an archon if you're up against a lot of rune decks and stuff like that either way guys if you made it this far into the video y'all are champions and i super duper appreciate you and i will see you in the next video